The Council of Ministers would also be directly involved in the development of regulations and policies. We further understand that, to be effective, the national regulator will fundamentally require the support and expertise of the best talent from Canada's financial markets from across the country. Likewise, we recognize that local offices and staffing were areas of particular interest to all provinces. Accordingly, we committed that local offices will remain in place and that all current staff in the provinces and territories will be offered jobs with the new regulator to ensure that that expertise stays in those local markets. This will permit the new regulator to build on that existing infrastructure and the expertise of participating provincial and territorial securities regulators. What is more, we additionally committed to ensuring that local offices have the authority they need to make the regulatory decisions that they should. This is in keeping with the proposed act, which charts an organization with comprehensive national standards made up of strong local offices with both an understanding of regional economies and that have the confidence of local businesses. Finally, to respect our provincial and territorial partners to the fullest extent, we also referred the proposed act to the Supreme Court of Canada to obtain an opinion on whether it is within the legislative authority of Parliament before proceeding further. This will clear the air, it will get direction from the highest court in the land, and it will provide certainty for all concerned provinces and territories, market participants, and individual investors. Benoit Peltier, the former Quebec Intergovernmental Affairs Minister for the Charest government himself has admitted, and I quote, the fact that the federal government decided to ask the court for an opinion, in my view, is something that is fair, unquote. Clearly and without a doubt, our Conservative government is working and is committed to keep on working collaboratively with willing provinces and territories to establish a national regulator that is responsive to the distinct needs of regionally based sectors and market participants. We also continue to invite all other provincial partners, including Alberta, Quebec and Manitoba, to participate in the process, even if it is in an exploratory manner. As Charlie Spiring, CEO and founder of Wellington West Capital, yet another Western Canadian supporter of a national regulator, who lamented Manitoba's non-participation recently by stating, coming to the table now doesn't mean you are committed to it, it just means you want to be at the table when they're making a the cake. Before concluding, Madam Speaker, I'd like to briefly address the issue of the passport system. Some have suggested a national regulator is not necessary because the provinces have already adopted a passport system to regulate securities. However, we have heard time and time again that that does not go far enough. With the passport system, Canada would still have 13 securities regulators, 13 sets of laws, however harmonized, and 13 sets of fees. As Ian Lee from the Sprott School of Business at Carleton University has noted, this is still an unnecessary frivolous duplication of expenditures as companies have to pay extra fees and go through extra paperwork to complete the process. Or, as the Saskatoon Star Phoenix editorial has pointed out, the passport system is, and I quote, a piecemeal approach that doesn't begin to address the kind of concerns raised by the IMF, reduce duplication, confusion, red tape, or cost for investors, or offer the centralized oversight and rules enforcement a single regulator provides. Madam Speaker, I believe that not only we should reject today's opposition motion, but that provinces like Quebec, Alberta, and Manitoba should reconsider their opposition, should work as partners with the federal government on this very important initiative going forward. Our Conservative government's plan to create a national Canadian securities regulator is long overdue. It represents a common sense approach with principles of clear accountability that will reduce overlap and duplication, strengthen enforcement, and more. We can no longer accept the current system, Madam Speaker. We owe Canadians better. Thank you very much. Questions and commentaires? Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Brom, Mississauga. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Earlier, earlier the Member for Edmonton, Le Duc, put the question to the Member for Chicoutimi, Le Fior. He's not listening. Perhaps I should uh, wait a bit. Well, earlier he put a question to the member for Chicoutimi Le Fior, and he said uh, something like this. Why can't Quebec accept that there is one single securities commission in Toronto for all of, all of the country? The question was quite simple. Now, what I would ask him 
Is he aware of the fact that in Quebec, we already have 14 pieces of legislation that protect our own uh, financial authority, and we've had it since 1967? What would he answer? That's my question, Madam Speaker. What would he answer if I were to put him the question, if it ever happens that there is a uh, single securities commission, and if people come from Chicago saying, why haven't you got in, why can't we get in touch with you? Why, why do you, why don't you just come to Chicago? Why do you need your own commission? Why? The Honourable Member for Edmonton Le Duke. Well, Madam Speaker, I never said why one securities commission in Toronto. In fact, uh, it's not been decided. Obviously, the legislation hasn't even been introduced. But it's not certain that the it's not certain that the national commission would be in Toronto. In fact, there are other options. I would encourage the member to have Quebec participate and fight for Montreal uh, to be the head of it. I would fight for uh, something in Alberta, or perhaps in Ottawa, wherever. But what? What we've done with our proposal here is said that we would, in fact, keep the expertise in the local offices. One of the concerns from Alberta is the issue of, say, junior capital pools, is they want to keep that local expertise in Alberta because they feel that people in other regions do not understand that expertise. So the proposal that we're putting forward here, if the members are actually interested in this, is that we'd keep that local expertise there, we'd rely on that. But the concern here, Madam Speaker, is that we are the only... We are the only nation of the G7 that has, that has a security system where we have 13 different regulators. And the intent here is to have a uniform system across the country for better enforcement, for better protection of market participants, for better protection of investors, so that we can have one uniform system. In terms of whether we should have one between Canada and the U.S., in fact, I would still fight for a Canadian securities regulator. And it would be up to the Parliament, if it adopted the Canadian securities regulator, it would be up to the Parliament then to protect and ensure they remain in place. This is the one area of our financial regulatory system, in my view, that is not up to the level that it should be. Every other area of our financial regulatory system, in my view, is tops in the world, but this is the one area that does need to be improved. And the member just has to read the reports from the IMF and the OECD include the most recent reports to recognize that Canada should follow this path. Questions and comments. Uh, the Honourable Member for Elmwood uh, Transcona. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. And uh, I'd like to know what the uh, member would have to say to his very own uh, Conservative Senator from Alberta who's leading the charge against the National Securities Regulator and who points out that, that over time there will be a job loss in Alberta and that a National Securities Regulator will not be sensitive to the uh, to, to the financial community as it exists in Alberta right now and where it plans to to go. So this is, this is a question of over time, Alberta, the Alberta, um, Alberta will lose jobs and let, let's not, uh, you know, the fact of the matter is that we know that this is going to be headquartered in Toronto. Everybody knows that. So the fact that they'll say, well, we haven't decided yet, that's just a big joke. We know that that's where it's going to be headed and over time those jobs are going to move from Montreal, from Edmonton, from Winnipeg, they're going to be concentrated in Toronto. And what does he say to the people in Alberta about that? The Honourable Member for Edmonton, Le Duke. 